Hello, everybody. A very warm key welcome to any visitors watching this morning. Of course, our St. Key Church family and all those watching locally and further afield. It is great to have you joining us this morning. And talking about joining us, I am joined this morning by my friend and colleague, Sean. Sean, are you there? I am. Morning, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, Sean. I'm doing okay. <laughs> but, uh, a few revelers I hear uh, down in Falmouth last night. Yes, yes. Uh, a few doors up, there was a little bit of uh, um, noise happening from about lunchtime onwards. <laughs> and we've just got the sheep as usual. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's great to welcome everybody to live stream again this morning, isn't it? Um, we've been doing this for a little while and um, we're aware that there's um, some people joining us that are um, our church family, obviously, who normally come to our services, but also quite a few people who um, wouldn't normally join us on a Sunday morning. And we'd love to hear from you. So if you are someone who doesn't normally join us on a Sunday morning, please get in touch with us. Um, drop us an email, contact at saintkey.org.uk. You can see the email on the screen there. Um, and just let us know um, that you've joined us and then we can include you in our weekly email, let, let you know what's going on, what sermon series are coming up um, and other things that are happening online. Yeah, that's great, Sean. We're a really friendly bunch of people here at Key, and we'd love to get to know you if you're joining us for the first time. And look, we've got a great morning planned. We're in our new series in the Book of Psalms. Will, Will will be preaching with us today, and we're going to be hearing about God is in control. Yeah, that's a really good message for the moment, isn't it? Um, we're also going to be asking you a question this morning. So it's a bit interactive. You're going to need a second device. Um, so that you can go to menti.com later on um, and take part in that survey. We've also got music from our church family and we've got prayers. Um, but the, first of all, Steve, why don't you open in prayer for us this morning? Yeah, I will do, Sean. Look, I, I wanted to bring a bit of scripture to the table this morning because I know that um, in these different times, we can be quite anxious. And Paul speaks to us in the book of Philippians in chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. He's in prison. And things aren't going too great for him. And I just want to read the scripture here this morning before we pray. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, it's quite hard, isn't it, sometimes to imagine, you know, not being anxious. And I think Paul really tells us here, we should go to God straight away. In those times when we were a bit unsure, when we don't know what's around the corner, he urges us to go to God with our prayer, because that's where we will find that real peace. That's where we'll find that hope. And that's going to be our prayer this morning as we open up. Heavenly Father, we just want to pause this morning. Lord, we know that you are here and you are present and you want to speak to us. And Lord, we want to open our eyes and our ears to hear your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yeah, I love that passage in Philippians. It's really powerful, isn't it? Um, well, this week we've also heard quite a lot um, uh, about changing restrictions on lockdown, things changing, schools going back in September, 
um, and announcements about that and the pubs are opening, which is great for some people, hairdressers maybe. Um, so um, that also affects us as a church. So we've asked Mark um, to make a short film, tell us a little bit about how these changing restrictions might affect us here at Key. Um, so uh, let's take a look at that now. Well, this week, some things in our society are starting to open up pubs and restaurants. Slightly ironic that with all the caravans and camper vans coming down to Cornwall this week, the weather is so atrocious. I even hear this week that hairdressers are going to be opening up and that will be good news for some of us. And we just wanted to record a short video to tell you how we're going to be opening up our church. Of course, the church hasn't really been closed. Church is not the building, the church is the people. We've been gathering on Sunday in our live stream. Small groups have been meeting online. New small groups have started. New people have been joining our church and watching us Sunday by Sunday through this period. Our pastoral care team and caring for one another, praying for one another has been enormous. The church hasn't been closed, but of course we have a longing to gather together as church family, to sing God's praises and hear one another singing God's praises to listen to God's word and respond together, to take bread and wine together. And so we want to, in safe and appropriate ways, be able to start gathering together. Now, as we start to do that, we're aware some people will feel quite nervous about doing that. And other people, because of health or vulnerability, they'll still be shielding or self-isolating and won't be able to gather with us. When we do gather, things will be different, we'll be socially distanced from one another. And through this period, we're determined that safety and inclusion will be our watchword, keeping one another safe as we start to gather and making sure everyone continues to feel included, even those who will still be at home. So in the first instance, we won't all be able to meet in one space on a Sunday. Uh, here at Pen Air, they've told us that we won't be able to use the school building for our Pen Air congregation until at least September. And given the size of our church family and the number of families and their children and the needs of social distancing, we won't all fit in one place. So like the other larger churches in Truro, like Grace Church and the Baptist Church, we're going to be continuing with our live stream on a Sunday as the place where we can all meet together. But that doesn't mean we're not going to be using our church buildings. Down here at Old Quay, we're already open for prayer. You can come on Wednesdays or Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, and just follow the simple guidelines. No more than three people uh, inside the church building. It's a very small church building at any one time. Uh, use the hand sanitizers as you arrive and leave. Sit in the pews uh, that are recognised. Uh, but this is an amazing place just to come uh, and to pray. And soon we'll also be opening up our building at All Hallows for people to come for private prayer. Uh, as well as opening our buildings to pray together, uh, we're going to be hosting a number of small gatherings where individuals or maybe whole small groups might come along. We can uh, read God's word together, encourage each other, share bread and wine together. Uh, a number of people have already indicated they're interested in coming to those. Uh, the first of them is going to be this Thursday evening and uh, folk will be receiving information about that at the start of this week. Uh, if you might like to come to one of those small gatherings just email office at stkey.org.uk office at stkey.org.uk uh, and we can be in touch to make those uh, small gatherings happen by arrangement. We also think there are lots of things we can learn from the last few months and while we've been in lockdown. As a local church uh, and as a national church. There are things that God have been teaching us through this period uh, and we're really keen for you to be part of that conversation. Uh, there's a survey taking place at the moment. Uh, we wrote about it in both this week's email uh, and the week before's email. The links are in the email and we would love you to be able to tell us what you think God is teaching us as a church uh, as a result of the coronavirus situation. There are many things that have been uh, awful about this and we can't wait to see the back of them but there are things also that we need to learn for the future uh, so do take the time enter in those results and we'll be feeding back to the whole church family no doubt these have been unprecedented and challenging times and the future will not be the same as the past uh, we're so grateful for all that so many in our church family have done to love and care for one another and over the next few months, as things start to change, 
Well, we want to continue to be as inclusive as possible, to work in a safer way as possible, and move to the next phase of growing the life of our church. So uh, now it's time for um, our prayers. Um, and this morning um, we have a double whammy, which is fantastic. We're joined by Neil and Ruth Bridal, who are normally part of our Truro congregation. So morning, guys. Um, Neil is also one of our church wardens. Um, so it's lovely to have you joining us. And you're also um, going to be doing prayer ministry um, after the service, which is really great. So we'll talk to you a little bit about that in a, uh, after you, maybe after you've done the prayers. Um, so how has lockdown been for you guys? It's uh, It's been pretty good, really. Um, I think I've probably learned a little bit about what retirement could look like if I allowed it. Um, but I think maybe things are, are becoming maybe just a little tedious now in the sense that um, it's more of the same every day. Um, lockdown's allowing us, of course, to spread our wings a little bit more. So maybe things will change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I um, and understand your your family has got bigger during lockdown. Yes, it has, hasn't it? Yes, we've got another little grandson, and he's called uh, Wilfred Carlos Ross Kernock. That's so uh, fantastic. Um, just make the link for us, because some people might be familiar with um, that name and not have made the link between you guys. Yeah, uh, Anna is our daughter, um, and Tim, her husband, they're both out in Naples um, with uh, the Royal Navy. Uh, we have a little granddaughter called Florence as well, the first um, fr from from that couple. Um, so yeah, in fact, we've just been talking just before we came on air um, about actually trying to go and see them because it's very frustrating. Um, in fact, we thought we thought we might investigate the possibility of hiring a camper van um, or, or, and, and maybe spending two or three weeks going to see them. That's just a thought at the moment. Whether well, we that can sounds develop, amazing. Yeah. Nothing like a road trip with a, <laughs> a road trip to visit a Florence. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so uh, thank you again for bringing us your prayers. Um, if I hand over to you and let you bring bring us the prayers this morning, um, and then perhaps we can chat about prayer ministry afterwards. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're going to do first. Yeah, I'm going to read out my prayer first. So if we could all pray together, that would be good. Heavenly Father, Thank you for all that you are. As we look outside of ourselves and see what you have created, the beauty and wonder of the world you have placed us in, you confirm to us your provision and love for us. You show us that you indeed are in control and that you are with us always. Your words tell us in the scripture that those that believe in you Will never, you will never leave or forsake, and that you're with us always. We pray for our church family, for the staff team who lead us and guide us, so that they may have time this uh, summer to rest and relax. And we, we uh, pray for your encouragement and that we would continue to trust in you as our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Yes, and Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our Father. And we know you are in control, although we do worry. We know we're living in unprecedented times and we don't really understand where this COVID-19 is going to take us as individuals, as a church family, as a community, or as a country. We cannot really trust that as we unlock and Holland makers travel into our community, that our future will be secure. But in you, Lord, we can trust. We can depend. We can put all our eggs in your basket. 
You encourage us not to worry. And in fact, you tell us not to worry and put our trust in you, to trust in you with all our heart. And so today we pray that that may be so. We ask that our church family would increasingly trust you and put our focus in that hope we have in Jesus. But Lord, we are so conscious that during this time, so many are suffering, so many are in financial trouble, so many have lost or are losing family, so many are about to lose their jobs. We thank you that so much help has been made available through various government agencies and charities. And we ask you, Father, to continue to bring your influence to bear on these situations, to soften hearts, to change minds, and to see you at work in these situations and acknowledge you. So we really want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was uh, fantastic to hear from Neil and Ruth Bridal. Um, now, they are going to be available after the live stream um, for prayer, prayer ministry. If you'd like to um, have them pray with you, you can either talk to Neil or Ruth or to both of them. Um, just look their number up on Church Suite um, and they'll be there waiting to speak to you. Um, and it was so lovely to hear those powerful prayers from them, wasn't it? Um, now, Steve, I think you're going to remind us about uh, what's happening elsewise after the live stream. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Hey, look, we have our Sunday club on Zoom. Our fantastic leaders are ready for you straight after the live stream. Look, if you have maybe misplaced your email, you can see it up on screen there. Just give me a quick email, stevem at stkey.org.uk, and I'll give you the link, no problem. Hey, look, also, we just want you to know, if anyone else needs support in any way this week, we have a dedicated team who would love to speak to you. And um, please do this by emailing us at support at stkey.org.uk. So that's corona support at stkey.org.uk. Well, look, we're not far away now to starting our new series in the Book of Psalms. And we know that Psalms are songs that express what we feel about God. And in this series, we'll be looking at what they teach about Jesus, who is the Son of God. Yeah. So grab a Bible. Uh, we're going to Psalm 2, which is handily sort of in the middle of the Bible, nice and easy to find. Um, and David Clulo is going to read to us. And then Will's going to help us think uh, a little bit more about Psalm 2 and how we might apply it. Don't forget, you're going to need an extra device. reading is Psalm 2, which is on page 596 in my Bible. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs and the Lord scoffs at them. And he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning uh, as we start our summer series on Jesus in the Psalms. And uh, as you know, Mark has set the precedent for uh, filming on location. So we thought we'd take advantage of this amazing Cornish summer weather to join you from the heights of the A390 outside our beautiful city. And as we look down, we can see the cathedral in all its glory in the center of the city. And it feels like we're standing on top of the world. And it reminds me of uh, Psalm 2 verse 4. God sits on his throne looking down on the earth, looking down on the turmoil that's all around us. And it can really feel like turmoil at the moment, can't it? 
as we uh, undergo more and more news reports, more and more confusing stories about uh, coronavirus and what's going to happen next. When will the lockdown really end? Will there be a second wave? It can make us feel confused, anxious, angry, maybe even angry at God. And it might be that we feel when we read these things that we ought to be in charge, that we'd make better decisions than the government. We might feel that uh, when we read the news, we've got an opinion on everything, that we ought to be the judge of what people do. Woe betide those tourists if they come and clog up our roads and our beaches and our hospitals. And it also gives us such a sense of anxiety and uncertainty. When is it going to end? When are we going to be able to hug one another? When are we going to be able to see one another face to face? When are we going to be able to shake hands? When am I going to be able to go to the gym, to the swimming pool, to church? I can't wait to be back and see all of you face to face. Well, all this uncertainty can make us wonder if anyone's really in charge. And what we need is a reality check. We need to be reminded that God is still on the throne. And that's what Psalm 2 gives us this morning. It gives us an amazing reminder that Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne in heaven. So have a look with me at verse 6, where God says he has set his king on Mount Zion, the heavenly throne, looking down on the whole earth. He is reigning and we are not. So Psalm 2 has got two things to say to us this morning, I think. First of all, Jesus is in charge. And second of all, we need to take refuge in him. So in this world, we see a world where people's lives are treated as nothing, where race and religion are used as reasons to hate one another and divide. We see a world where people's, people's opinions are treated as nothing and where anxiety and uncertainty reign. And the Bible tells us that the main problem with humanity is that we've turned away from God and therefore we've become disconnected from him and from each other. We've put ourselves on the throne of our own lives and we've kicked God off the throne. And seven billion people all trying to do that together causes no end of problems, as we know. Well, Psalm 2 gives us a reality check. We haven't kicked God off the throne. He's still there. Have a look at verse 4. He laughs at the idea that we could do that, that we could remove him from his place. And he set his king, Jesus, on the throne of heaven in verse 6. Jesus is reigning. Jesus is in charge. And that king, Jesus, is the one who's going to come back in verse 9 and judge. This is the same Jesus who died on the cross, who rose again on the third day, and who ascended into glory. He's now sitting on the throne in heaven with his heavenly Father, reigning over everything. We need this perspective today. We need to see that he is the one who's in charge of everything. Now, there'll be two types of people hearing this this morning. The first person might be saying, I don't want God to be in charge of my own life. I'm in charge, thanks very much. I don't need you. You might think that you're managing things perfectly well without God. You might hate the idea of a cosmic rule keeper standing over you, keeping score. Well, this psalm teaches us that God is in charge and he sent his son to be the king over the whole universe. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with acknowledging that fact. There's great dignity in realising that God is in charge and we're not. And the second type of person might be the type of person who takes on the burdens of other people. You're a good and caring person. You long to do what's right and you look out for and support other people to a fault maybe. Maybe you look at the news each day and feel more and more anxious as you see all the uncertainty, all the worries, all the uh, concerns in the news. Well, for those types of people, we need to hear that Jesus is in charge and he's good. He knows what's best. We don't have to sit on the throne because he's doing it. We need to pass our concerns on to him. Because you see, the problem with both of those perspectives is that they have us at the centre, us on the throne. Either I make my own decisions or I have to be the one to carry other people. And Psalm 2 is here to tell us that we're not, that Jesus looks down on the world, just as we're looking down now on Truro and sees how much turmoil there is, but he's still in control of it and he knows what's best for us. Now we're going to pause now for a brief activity on Menti, 
I'm going to hand over to Steve and Sean, who are going to ask us to think about where we are when we're in our happy place, where we go for refuge, where we go for peace and that sense of rest. So I'll hand over to them now. Right, hopefully you had a chance while we had our pause earlier to get your extra device ready. So you need to go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and then enter 111093, or you can use the little QR code thing if you're good with those. And it will take you to this screen here that you can see. Uh, and you have three opportunities. Uh, you actually have as many opportunities as you want to enter words. So if you fill in three and you've still got more you want to put in, um, then do feel free to try again. Uh, so where, what do you turn to or where do you go when you need to find refuge? Steve, how, how are you getting on? Oh, yeah. Oh, Sean, you caught me in the midst. I was... Uh, I was... <laughs> I was I was being very holy. I typed in God for my first one. And, oh, uh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about you, Sean? Is, do you have a special place you go to or, or something? Yeah, I love to go um, up on the cliffs and um, look out over the sea. And uh, it is a time to pray and contemplate. But, yeah, that's great. And, you know, friends, parents. Um, I'm liking rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> They say pets are very therapeutic. Maybe that's what they mean. Sean, can you give us that code again? Uh, yeah, it's 111093. Fantastic. Thanks, Sean. How are we doing? So what have we got coming in? Beach? Oh, this... Music? Beach. Brilliant. Bed. <laughs> Bed. How about that, friends? Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Oh. Bible. Wine. Husband. Um, well, wow. yeah. that must be my wife doing that. That's brilliant. Oh. Well done, Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, family, God, the beach, friends. What else can you see that I've missed? Glass of wine. Yeah. Food. Yeah, cake. That's always good. Yeah. Uh, sleep. Sermon. Yeah, good. Rabbits are still coming up large in the middle. Who's doing that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's loads there, isn't there? Yeah. It's really important, isn't it, to have something that you can turn to, especially at the moment when we can't physically go necessarily and and spend time and hug the people that we might normally turn to. What about you, Steve? Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, it is uncertain times, and I think um, it was really poignant what Will was saying there. You know, when we're anxious, when we're, it's just so great to know that God is the King and He's sitting on the throne, and you know, that's where we can can go in those times um yeah and we can but you and you can do that in all places can't you walking on the cliff you know your, your mind and your heart can just have peace and you can just start focusing on him in those times can't you and things like small group are really valuable at this sort of time where you know um if you've got the just those few people who are part of your church family um who you can chat to and be open with somebody's putting wife in there and it's getting bigger so it's <laughs> Obviously, yeah. that's bad. Sure. <laughs> yeah, certainly. And and I mean, even this week, we know that, you know, obviously uh, the churches are opening for prayer. So down at Old Key, and that can be a place for many people to find their time, can't they? Just to be at peace and rest with God in a familiar setting. Yeah. And being in the church family, is, uh, in the churchyard is really good, isn't it? Amen. So, um, great. Sean, shall we head back to Will to see what he has to say to us for part no two? Idea. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, well, it's still raining here and uh, I can barely see Truro Cathedral in the background, but uh, believe me, it's still there. So what did you put down as your answer? Did you put down uh, family, friends, uh, Facebook, binging on a box set maybe? Or maybe you put down something pious like reading the Bible and prayer or going to church or going to the beach, something like that. Whatever it was, that will have been the place where you find security, hope and peace. Well, Psalm 2 is here to tell us that Jesus can be that place of refuge for us. He has been put on the throne of heaven precisely so that we will trust in him 
and find refuge in him. The last three verses of Psalm 2 are all about how we respond to the news that Jesus is on the throne. It's not enough just to know the truth. We have to do something about it. So in verse 11, we see that we need to serve him. And in verse 12, we see that we need to seek refuge in him. Now, seeking refuge in him looks like trusting him, laying down our lives before him, acknowledging that we're not in control and that we need him. Blessed is the one who seeks refuge in him. That's an amazing promise for us today. If we're anxious about the world, if we think that we should be in charge because no one else could get it right, or if we think that we're so anxious on behalf of other people, in both those cases, we can trust that Jesus is on the throne and that we can take refuge in him. And he says that we should fear Jesus as well. We should fear the king and put our trust in him. Now that fear is not a terror, not a fear of someone who's abusive or evil, of some kind of dictator or cosmic monster. This is fear as in right respect and reverence. Just like Mr. Beaver says in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe about Aslan, who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he is good. And that's what we can say about our king on the throne. He is good and we need to fear him rightly. This is amazing. Look at verse 12 with me. He says, kiss the sun. That's a sign of respect. For us, it would mean laying down our lives before him, drawing near to him in prayer, in trust, in love, in obedience. We kiss the Son when we recognise that he's in charge, when we submit to him. We kiss the Son when we serve him and love his people. But there's also beauty in that, that we can draw near to Jesus. We can draw near to the Son of God in prayer, in worship, in trust. And we can have that relationship with him that means that we find peace in him. Look at the amazing promise at the end of verse 12. Blessed is the one who finds refuge in him. All those places we thought of where we feel safe, where we're in our happy place, those are great, those are a gift from God. But the ultimate place where we can find refuge and peace is in him. He's the one who first went to the cross for us, who first took our sins so that he could go to glory. He now sits on the throne and we can trust him with everything. So whether you naturally want to throw God off the throne and take control yourself, or weigh yourself down with the burdens of others, we both of us need to put our trust in Jesus and take refuge in him today. We need to remember that he is reigning on that throne and he can be our glorious security. And we're going to sing now about that glorious security, that glorious throne, as Graham and Claudia lead us in the song, There is a Higher Throne.
Well, thank you to the Lovelands for giving us that song this morning. Thank you to Will for bringing the word, uh, even in the Cornish mist. All of it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, do remember that uh, Neil and Ruth Bridal are going to be here uh, at home waiting for you to call um, if you've got anything you would like to pray about or if anything has struck you from uh, Psalm 2 uh, that you would like to chat through with them and have them pray with you. Um, you can find the number on Church Suite, so just go on to Church Suite and look them up. Yeah, thanks for that, Sean. Look, sadly, it's time for us to just about head off. So, Sean, would you be able to do us the honours and just close in prayer for us? Yes, yeah, certainly. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you teach us through the Psalms that um, you are in control, that you are our Heavenly Father and you are on the throne um, no matter what we do. Um, and help us to follow you, uh, especially in these challenging times. Help us to remember that you know the end from the beginning and that um, we can turn to you and seek refuge in you and you will guide us and lead us. Um, help us in the coming week, uh, especially as things change and restrictions change, which might make us feel uncomfortable. Um, and just pray that you will give us a sense of peace, that you are in control and we can trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks, Sham. Well, look, that really is the end for today. Uh, we're going to be back next week, uh, back into the Psalm, Psalm 24. So really looking forward to that. Sham, any further thoughts before we go? Yeah, just to the kids, don't forget Sunday Club Zoom. Get yourselves onto the Zoom chat now um, and uh, catch up with your Sunday Club leaders. Don't forget the answers to the survey. Go back to your email and have a look at the link from that so that you can tell us what we should learn and what we can improve on from lockdown. And have a good week, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Look, it's a big goodbye from all of us here. Have a great week, yeah. everybody. God bless. Yeah, cheerio. Bye, everybody.